Hey everyone, welcome back to your 22nd native script video in which we're going to continue our application of login application of creating a login interface for our users and add server and authentication and all that good stuff. So before starting off, I would just like to show you that we have made a little bit of changes in the file structure if you see here. So now inside the native app, it goes, the whole app goes so that I can just place another server as well here and work on it directly in the same editor. So now you're going to see that in the e-commerce folder, we have native app and I'm just going to make a server folder here, which would contain our server, right? You can again find the source code in the description if you want. Um, all right, so let's get into server. Oh, we already are. So now what I want is to initialize spin off a really quick server here and i could just pretty much do that with express that would work for me so once we do that we could just pretty much create a very simple um you know index.js file here which would pretty much just be spinning off our express server right here just saying express and i'm just gonna say app is express this because this is not a server side tutorial i'm not really going to go into very details of what i'm doing here but it should probably just make sense to you and it's gonna say app dot get and request response i'm just gonna respond hello world here right simple as that on our application however what we're gonna do is um let's see so we have our main page here on tap i wanted to just fire the summit function where on the summit function what we can say that this is an async function now we're going to bring in our http module so this would be actually we're going to bring in require from http module just http and this should actually be request not require right so once we have the request we could pretty much do some good stuff here so i'm going to say that my response is await request and request would contain options the useful options which would allow us to set things like you know maybe our url which in our case would be localhost 81337 uh, right and uh, i'm going to say method of get right initially let's just take a look what it returns us right once we have that what i'm going to do is just pretty much say console.log um yeah r only right so yeah one more thing what i want to tell you is how do we debug the native script applications in chrome dev tools so to do that actually let me see if i can bring my terminal here um yeah just i'll just bring it right here so to do that what we're gonna do is close our project and i'm gonna say this command dns debug ios instead of run now we're gonna name it debug what it would do is this it would give me a chrome dev tools url which would be our debugger instead of this default native script debugger right rest remains same so this would actually enable us to view our javascript debug logs so you see now we have this chrome dev tools url which then i can just go ahead and load into my browser and i'm gonna see our old familiar dev tools here right all right so this was a quick little tutorial on doing that so let's get back to what we actually wanted so okay if we take a look now i'm just gonna spin off my server here by going into server and i'm gonna say node index.js which would start listening on 1337 now one obvious problem which i encountered right here is that you see that your application here is running inside an ios simulator so its local host is not same as your own computer right so that creates problem because now you're not able to communicate with your own system however when you deploy your application to say production it would work fine because you would be having like your domain or something.com and, you know some sort of path or api or something like that right but here what happens is that in order to make use of this 
what we can do is uh, for android i know that we can use adb reverse tcp command to map the ports of your android device to your system but for ios i'm not really sure um there might be some ways to get around this but what i prefer is something known as ngrok which uh, just tunnels your local host over internet right so i'm gonna say ngrok http and then the port on which i'm listening that is 1337 right you could download ngrok by just googling it i'm not really going to get into details here because then it would just make it another yet another tutorial and actually this is not really a nice little terminal i'm just going to spin it in my terminal right here in front of me so i'm going to say ngrok http 1337 and what the url i got for this is now another catch with ios devices is that they cannot perform request over http protocol unless they have something specified in their info.plist file which is something you know um, we're not going to get into right now but this could be simply fixed by https which is a url which ngrok, ngrok provides to us so we are in luck so now if we just pretty much go ahead and reconnect our dev tools and hit login we should be able to see that uh, we get null right here um okay well let's see it does return us hello world here so let us see what's happening we're gonna set a debugger here we could just go ahead and set a debugger here and i'm just gonna console.dir instead of log hit save press on login we get to our debugger point here let us see i'm just gonna continue right here so if we get to here we should be able to see that r is actually has a lot of stuff so I'm not really sure why it logged null at that point so okay maybe um the console log which it uses it's not really that um not really sure why that was the case but anyway which we can just get our content by this to string and once we hit save we're, we're gonna see that we get hello world logged into our application right here right so i'm just gonna reconnect this real quick console hit login you're gonna see we hit our debugger let it just run through there i'm gonna remove the debug point hit save and we have our hello world so in this way we are able to at least communicate to the server right now right so that's all for this video in the next one we're going to set up our server code and add a database as well maybe let us see so yeah i'll see you then in the next video